am Julie Vellucci, born and raised in Mississauga, Ontario, 17-year-old author of the book, The 30-Day Exchange. This book takes readers on a journey as Jonah, um, Jonah Walters, the main character, um, looks for his biological mom. Uh, ever since he was little and his adopted parents and uncle passed away, he's been curious about his upbringing. Uh, but the answers he's been looking for are way more complicated than he could have ever imagined. Uh, with him being part of an exchange policy when he was born. An exchange policy that is store-like, called the 30-day exchange. Um, after the passing of Jonah's adopted parents and uncle, he's put into foster care, where he meets uh, many different people whose uh, stories are also explored in this book. And they all help each other overcome obstacles and become really close. This book is a romance and with the subgenre of teen fiction with elements of adventure and mystery to it. But before we dive further into it and also the secondary stories involved, I'm going to just pull out um, Jonah's baby philosophy from page 15 and 16. Alrighty. Ever since I was a child, I went by a philosophy that I believe everyone should live by. I call it the baby philosophy, which is the fact that I believe nobody should give up a child. It's basically like giving the precious gift of parenthood away. A baby is like having your heart walk outside of your body, or it should be at least. You feel everything your baby does and would do basically anything for him or her. Because the love you share for your infant is unconditional, just like the love you have for your partner, if not greater, because you created this child together. Yet so many people go around having sex to display their feelings for one another that could have easily been exchanged through words, a simple glance or kiss that says so much. They don't realize that sex is meant for creating a baby and are terrified that they give up their child or get rid of their child through an abortion, after their actions as if they expected a different result. If you couldn't see yourself having a child with the person you're with, then don't have sex. If you were raped or something, then it's your body your choice. Other than that, I stand by that saying. That's a saying I've always lived by, which might sound strange coming from a guy, because according to women, that's all we ever want to do. But not me. I would never want to put a child through everything I went through in foster care or in general, with everything that's slowly coming out of the pinata, everything that was hidden so well. You can only imagine how that Jonah would have that opinion on everything because of how his um, biological mom left everything. All he knows is her name, and he thinks she left him, didn't care about him. Like, he doesn't know any better. Obviously, the, the, all of that is revealed at the end. I'm not going to confirm anything, but it's revealed, and that's his opinion on it, um, which also supports why he's so close to someone he meets in foster care by the name of Alana Fernandez. She's older than him. Um, she's almost uh, 17, and she's a single mom, as she was a rape victim and her six month old son was the result of that. So he almost sees her as a motherly figure. He also bonds with other people he meets at the foster home. There's PJ Hansen, who um, introduces him to everyone there. He's sweet, kind, caring. He ensures that Jonah can fit in. And he also has his own story in this book as he's part of the LGBTQ community. And uh, there's a guy he liked for two years, but he doesn't know if this guy is gay as well. He doesn't know where his feelings stand. So that story is explored and he helps Jonah seek out his biological mom as well. Alana's love story is also explored. And there is another character that's introduced after PJ and Alana, 
Her name is Hope Nanville. She's almost like a rebel girl, but there's more to her than meets the eye. And all four of them, they all help each other overcome their obstacles together. They each have their own love story, as I mentioned. And, well, they each have their own issues um, that they make peace with and they grow together. They become better people together, showing the power of friendship. And there are many other themes in this book, like love, deceit, betrayal, a lot of themes that are touched on, but self-growth is a huge one. Um, if I could think of advice to give um, an aspiring writer, I would probably say never give up. If you enjoy writing, if you want to write a book, don't let the fact that it might be a tough process you don't think you'll be able to get it published one day. You don't think your work's good enough. Don't let that get in the way. Just focus on your, how much you enjoy writing. And don't let the fact that, oh, this has been written before. I can't do this. Stop you. Because everything has really been written before, but it hasn't been written by you. And, well, with your imagination, maybe your unique uh, perception on something, you'll find a way to make it amazing and make it stand out. Um, I actually started writing, um, I want to say October, November, maybe December, so sometime around that time. And I want to say grade 10. I'm in grade 12 now, by the way. Um, after joining a book and writing club. I joined it because I like to read and I thought it'd be fun. But so we did talk about like books and stuff, but some people in the club actually uh, wrote their own things, which I thought was really interesting. And I thought, imagine like I could do that, that'd be incredible. So after a while, an idea came to me, I decided to give it a try and I've been writing ever since. I loved it. Um, yeah. And, um, so motivation, um, my family has definitely like been a huge influence. My parents, my sister, they've always encouraged me, supported me. Um, from day one, I knew that I wanted to get my books published as soon as I started writing them. That was like my long-term goal, which was definitely motivation itself. I was on the writing platforms, Wattpad and Inkid which helps me to get like feedback on my books and comments that would make my day sometimes. Some of them were so sweet and would make me smile. So the encouragement itself was definitely motivation. Um, and I actually like, this isn't the first book I've written. Like I wrote stuff before this. Um, one, like being uh, the first book in like a trilogy I wrote that I was trying to get like published, I want to say in the summer. Um, but the offer I got, it ends up falling through. It didn't work out. Um, and although that felt like a bump in the road, it somehow, I don't know, it boosted my confidence a little. Like, okay, while well, these people weren't legit, maybe I'll find another publishing company. Maybe like a new opportunity will come my way kind of thing. Uh, this whole publishing process in general though, it was like quicker than I expected. Um, the cover is amazing. I absolutely love the cover. Um, Ukiyoto Publishing, oh, really amazing. Um, anything that they needed to like do to the book, they'd always run it by me first. They didn't do anything without my permission. I found that like we were working together on everything, which was really nice. I'd highly recommend this publishing company and for any of my future works, I would definitely use them again. Thank you.